Hey, my name is Kelly Kessler. I'm the host of the podcast, Rewiring Health, and I'm obsessed with helping you stop feeling burnout, living in pain, and anxious about the future. You see, for years, I felt like I was never good enough. I repeated in my head, when I accomplish this, then I'll finally be happy. And even when I accomplished it, there was always emptiness in my heart. I always put others' needs before my own, negative thoughts ran wild in my head, and I always struggled to truly feel like I could relax and be present. Well, through my journey of healing, rewiring my brain, regulating my nervous system, and reprogramming my subconscious mind, I have recovered from an eating disorder, I have healed from chronic back pain, and I can truly be present with my two boys and feel that I am living the life I was destined to live with purpose and with joy. And I'm here to guide you along the same journey of healing. So many women have struggled with body image and the ability to love and accept their body for all the beauty that it is. And that is why this episode is just so important for so many to listen to. In this episode, I have the pleasure of speaking with Gabby Jockers. Gabby Jockers is a mindful boudoir photographer and owner of Embodied Art Boudoir, a body positive boudoir studio in Golden, Colorado, just outside of Denver. She uses yoga and mindfulness practices to help her clients get out of their heads and into their bodies so they can experience embodied expression, confidence, and self-love. She's also the co-creator of the Body Deck, a body image focus affirmation card deck. Welcome back to another episode of Rewiring Health. Very excited to be joined by Gabby Jockers. Thank you so much for coming, and I'm so excited to have this conversation with you. Thanks so much, Kelly. I'm really excited to be here and to dive into all these really important topics that we definitely need to talk more about in our society. Oh my gosh, so true. And I just love what you do, and that's, that's, that's why I'm so excited to have you on here, because you do this in such a unique way, and I can't wait to hear more about it. And just give people another option for accepting themselves and just the beauty of what they are innately than, you know, as themselves. So do you mind talking about your journey of how you got started and where that has brought you to what you do today and how that brought you to where you do today? Sure. Um, so <laughs> anytime somebody asks me this question, they're going to get a completely different answer because mm-hmm. that's how my brain works. Yeah. So if I think about how I got started and how I got to where I I am today, I start thinking about uh, when I first started getting exposed to yoga. Mm -hmm. And though my first experience with yoga was through asana, the postural practice, what you think of when you hear of like yoga classes, you know, doing a bunch of poses on the mat. Um, Though that was my yoga practice for a few years after going through teacher training and uh, opening my eyes to the greater, the immense depth Mm-hmm. Um, of a spiritual and philosophical practice of yoga <laughs> and learning that the poses are only a tiny fraction of what is actually yoga that has, well, it, let's just say it was deeply transformational, became a part of my life and influenced my worldview and my approach to basically everything. Mm-hmm. So that is a really important part because that is something that I bring into the work that I do now, which got started in mm, 2019 or so when I was just like so tired of working for other people. I was like, it's time. I'm going to start my business. <laughs> my partner had just gotten his master's degree and I was, you know, like the breadwinner during that time. And I was like, okay, dude, it's my turn. <laughs> go make some money so I could go start my business. You know, let's take turns. It's the benefit of our relationship. We take turns. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and so I started in photography. I didn't actually start in boudoir photography. I started in weddings and then COVID happened and it completely uh, crippled my business at launch. <laughs> and that ended up being a really good thing for me in the long run, even though it super sucked um, in the year, in the moment, you know, that was a long moment. Uh, it super sucked, but it ended up being a really good thing because what it did was it gave me a lot of space to fill. And how did I fill that space? A lot of bullshit, but also a lot of important stuff of a self-reflection and learning and that kind of stuff. And through, through those years, I really worked hard. Well, mostly through 2020, I really worked hard on diving inward and discovering my values and my why and my purpose and the reason why 
I want to have a business and the reason why I want to work with people and the reason why, 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 all this kind of stuff. Why? Mm -hmm. I ask a lot of why questions. My parents were really annoyed by it growing up, but you know what? It got me to where I am today. today. No regrets, right? Absolutely. (laughs) And through that process, I realized wedding photography was not at all something I wanted to do for Mm -hmm. a number of different reasons. And it was actually a friend of mine who invited me multiple times to try boudoir photography. You'd be so good at it. You would love it. La la la. And at first I was like, no, I'm busy. I wasn't that busy, but (laughs) I was just like, I needed an excuse. When I finally did it, it was like something clicked. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hold up. This is actually really important. Mm -hmm. (laughs) This is really important to me. This is really important to the people I'm working with. And I started uncovering the connection, the connection between my why and my purpose and my values and boudoir photography was much stronger than wedding photography. Mm -hmm. And it kind of led me down that path of boudoir photography and how it can help you connect to your body and connect to your heart, connect to your spirit, connect to your breath, connect to yourself. And as I kept on focusing on boudoir photography, investing more time and effort and learning in that area, and at the same time, continuing my personal reflection, then I was able to start merging my background in like yoga and mindfulness, meditation, all that kind of good stuff into the boudoir world to create something totally unique, something totally different. There's no other boudoir photographer who does what I do, Mm -hmm. Um, which I feel proud of because it's not like, oh, I came up with something new and cool. It was just like, oh, I figured out how my work with clients in my business can express my expertise in other areas, could express my values and my purpose in such a way to help them have a more profound experience than just taking some sexy photos. No, no problems with sexy photos at all. Those are fabulous. But I just wanted to create something that was a little bit more uh, profound, a little bit more aligned with my expertise and what I knew how to do and what I knew I could help other people with. Because I could take some sexy photos, sure, but I wanted to do more than that. (laughs) I wanted to do sexy photos plus an experience that helps you connect deeply to your body, connect deeply to yourself and reorient the relationship you have with yourself. I love that. And I just love how you focus on the transformation of the person, not just like you said, here's a quick experience, but it's like something that you can take with your life through your life and start appreciating yourself. And I just, I love how your journey too. It's like, you think you're going to go one direction and it's like, you're really destined for something else, but you had to go through those trials and tribulations to find what your purpose was. And I absolutely. I just love that, but it was like so perfect for combining all your, your values and all your strengths. And I just love that you did that. It's amazing. Yeah. It ended up being perfect. And the same thing with the card deck, the body deck that I have, it was launched last year. And that was also just this perfect expression of, of values and purpose and art, creativity, yeah. all this kind of fun stuff. Um, that just ended up being the perfect expression slash culmination of all those things as well. That is so complementary to the work that I do in boudoir, but a much more accessible price point and a much more everyday price. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Do you mind talking on that a little bit more and just letting people know what the body deck is and how it can help them? Absolutely. The body deck is a affirmation card deck I co-created with my childhood best friend, Melissa. She did a lot of the design. I provided a lot of the photos. You'll find a lot of boudoir photos in there. Um, don't worry, nothing um, nothing PG-13 or, or, or R-rated or anything like that. It's all like, there's no nudity in the bag. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's fine for, you know, smaller, smaller humans as well, younger mm-hmm. humans. Um, it has 77 cards, uh, 77 different affirmations. And we created this because again, that values fit. So my, my friend has a career, has a small child, has a practice that she was finding really hard to keep up with her self-care and her, um, you know, self-building practices while mega stressed out at work and also raising a small child. Mm -hmm. And so she used a lot of card decks, but none of them were quite what she wanted. You know, there were no card decks that were focused on her relationship with her body and setting positive intentions, Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. They were more 
you know, they had different specialties, anything from tarot to other kinds of decks Mm -hmm. or generic affirmations, not generic, like not good, but generic, like not specifically focused on the body. Um, And so she came to me with this idea for the card deck and it was just such a perfect compliment to what I already so strongly believed in. Mm -hmm. And it was also just a really fun project. Uh, Just the process of creating so many affirmations. We spent, I don't know, maybe like six months or something, Mm -hmm. just creating the affirmations, just putting everything that both of us have learned combined in our own personal growth, self-love, body confidence journeys. And she is a registered dietitian who works with eating disorder um, patients in recovery. And so she had a lot from that side to bring into it. And I had a lot from the boudoir and body image and mindfulness and body connection side of it to bring into it. So it ended up being a really um, beautiful way to express the, the positive beliefs that we had cultivated in ourselves Mm -hmm. and share those with others so that they could also start cultivating those beliefs in themselves. Because I'm a big believer that we have way more control over our minds than we give ourselves credit to. Mm -hmm. And affirmations are just one of the many ways that you can alter your thinking patterns Mm -hmm. And alter your beliefs in ways that better support you rather than hold you down. Yes. Oh, I love that. And it's, it's so true. I mean, to be able to have a tool that you can use, like, I love the concept of it. I, I, I love how you both came together and with your expertise and, and did that. And especially since your childhood friends, that's so cool, but um, it was really fun. <laughs> yeah. That's really awesome. I love that. And I just love the whole purpose of it because we do have so much control over our brains and how we move forward in life. And if we have these limiting beliefs and these subconscious beliefs that are holding us back, we're going to move in that direction. And if we're bogged down by negativity, we're just allowing ourselves to continue to move that direction. But if you're giving yourself an ounce of, you know, starting small, even if it's just one card a day, like starting with something that is positive and uplifting and bringing up your energy. I mean, what an awesome gift to yourself every day to to do that. So I, I love that. Yeah. And I always like to give the caveat that I do firmly believe that we have so much more power over our minds than we give ourselves credit to while also giving a shout out to the fact that a lot of people do have a lot harder time than others, whether it's through their own, maybe chemical imbalances Mm -hmm. or through their uh, circumstances, the families, the neighborhoods, the communities that they grew up in. Um, So, you know, just like to mention it, it's going to be a different journey for everyone. Mm -hmm. And some people are coming from it, coming at it from a much more disadvantaged position to begin with, Mm -hmm. but I believe it can be helpful to anyone, no matter where you're at. It just might your journey is going to look different depending on where you're coming from, where you're going to and where you're at right now. Yeah, I agree. It's such an important point to make too, because, you know, for anyone who's listening to this, you, you may be in a really tough place right now and feel like, okay, well, will this work for me? And it, it is important to acknowledge that, you know, you can't compare yourself to someone else's journey because you uniquely have these experiences and, and what you've gone through and only, you know, what that looks like. But again, if you can take the smallest step forward, then that's important to do, to move yourself in a different direction. So yeah, great point to make, because again, it is, it is very individualized and everybody has their own path that they need to go on. Yeah. I I love that kind of going off of, of that. Can you talk about, um, how we can heal body image through mindfulness. So I know you have a lot of that in your practice and I just love how, you know, you've incorporated that into the photography and, and how you meld that together. But can you talk about how we can heal our own personal views of our bodies through being just mindful of them? Absolutely. So I'll start with Um, describing what is mindfulness for Mm -hmm. people who maybe have heard the word before, but are not quite sure for people who have never heard this word before. um, And don't come at me with that's not what this textbook says, or that's not the scientific quote exactly of blah, blah, blah. That's not how my memory works. I'm never going to be able to spit out exact quotes from experts and like stats and figures. (laughs) But basically at the core of it, mindfulness is an awareness of what is currently going on with you. 
without judgment. That's a really, really, really important part of mindfulness. Mindfulness isn't just saying my back hurts or I feel bloated or my neck feels weird or whatever. It's or, oh, this, uh, okay, here, this is a good example, especially for, for probably for your listeners can probably relate to this example. I'll describe what is, what is awareness and what is mindfulness, maybe. <laughs> awareness might say, wow, my jeans are fitting really tight. Oh, my belly roll is hanging over my jeans. Oh, this is so gross. Or, oh, I hate this. Or, oh, I need to go on a diet. You might be aware of the fact that your jeans no longer fit you, that your body is spilling out over the edge of your jeans. And that there are these things going on. And then you attach this judgment. What does it mean about you? It means you need to go on a diet. It means you need to lose weight. It means blah, 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 blah. It means you didn't try hard enough at exercise or whatever. That is not mindfulness. Mm-hmm. Mindfulness is being aware of these things without judging the fact that they exist. So these genes are fitting really tight. The mindful approach might be like, these genes are feeling, fitting really tight. Hmm, I'm not super comfortable. Maybe I should grab another pair of pants. Mm-hmm. That fit. It yeah. made me feel more comfortable. I'm not putting judgment on my body for not conforming to this arbitrary measure of this stupid pair of jeans. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but the jeans need to fit me. I don't need to fit the jeans. The jeans are an inanimate piece of fabric. Yeah. I am a little bit more important than an inanimate piece of fabric. <laughs> my body does a lot more for me than an inanimate piece of fabric. Mm-hmm. But mindfulness is an awareness of what you're feeling where you're feeling it, both physically and emotionally, sensations, feelings, these kinds of things, an awareness without judgment. You're not making it mean anything about you. You're not making it mean that you didn't try hard enough or that you're lazy or that you need to try harder or that you messed up. It just is. It's just, it's just what's happening in the moment. Mm-hmm. That's what mindfulness is. This is awareness without judgment. Yeah, And I I really like, I think that without judgment is a really important piece for how this can relate to body confidence, body image, that kind of stuff. And I think it also has to do with, I don't know if you talk to your audience about like body neutrality versus body positivity and that kind of stuff. Oh no, it froze. But yeah, I've had guests that have spoken on that before. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. So a, a nice thing, I think body neutrality is so amazing and it has a lot to do with mindfulness because it is taking away the judgment element of how we feel about our bodies. So I noticed I came from this, but I feel like there's a lot of different relationships people have with their bodies. A lot of different places are coming from. Some people are coming from the hate side of the spectrum or like everything is a flaw. Everything is a problem. I came from the complete disconnection side of the spectrum of just like, what is my body? I don't know. I just live in it and I exist. Mm -hmm. I had no awareness of how, you know, you could ask me how I'm feeling and I could tell you fine because I didn't know anything more beyond that. Mm -hmm. So it's not that I had a really negative relationship with my body is that I didn't have one. I did not have much of a relationship with my body at all. I simply used and abused it, let it like, didn't really care how how I treated it because it didn't really register on my radar so much unless I like injured myself. Yeah. So for me, mindfulness helped me connect to my body so I could better appreciate it for what it does for me. That's that body neutrality piece because body positivity says loving how you look. Body neutrality is loving your body for what it does for you. It's a more neutral approach that, you know, you don't have to look a certain way. Your body doesn't have to look a certain way worthy of appreciation, of gratitude, of respect, of compassion, these kinds of good things. So very roundabout way of answering your question. I believe that when we can connect to our bodies in a mindful way with that key piece, without judgment, that gives us the opportunity to see and experience our bodies with new eyes in a more fresh way that gives us the space in our minds to experience what's it like to be in our body, what's it like to be in our body when it feels good, when it feels not so good, and learn from those experiences so that rather than heaping judgment on yourself for like, let's say you eat something that makes you feel weird, rather than making it a a judgment about 
oh, I messed up or whatever, more of a notice of like, "Mm, when I ate that like giant bucket of fried chicken, I kind of fell back for a day or so afterwards. Maybe I should, you know, not do that (laughs) because I want to feel good because I want my body to feel vibrant and alive and not bogged down under whatever gas, whatever that makes you feel right. So definitely not my most succinct answer to that question. So sorry for that. (laughs) That's okay. No, it's okay. No, you touched on so many important points. And I, I just love the distinction you made between awareness and mindfulness, because I know so many people have probably heard those terms and thought they were exactly the same, or maybe didn't even know what mindfulness is. And yet you hear it all the time, be mindful, be mindful. And you're like, okay, what does that mean? So thank you for giving those definitions and making them so practical and applicable to how you can live your life. And, and one thing that really just stuck out to me as you're speaking is like the difference between having compassion for yourself versus almost punishing yourself Mm -hmm. for, for different things. And also having the recognition that you are worth more than, than any, you know, perspective, anyone else's perspective on what your body is, or, you know, that just to value yourself in such a, a way that you treat it well and treat your body well and treat your brain well. And I just, I love all that, the messages you brought with that, because it, it is so important. I, I know so many people that, you know, I was in that place and, and I'm sure many, many women have been in that place where they just come down on themselves over and over and over again. And it's like, when we attach that emotion, you know, we, we, like you said, the genes example, you feel the genes and then now you start applying that judgment to it. And then when that replays over and over and over again, that now becomes that dialogue that just stays exactly. and it becomes who you are when you have that. And you actually wire your brain to believe that you are not, you're not lovable or you're not worthy. And and those things stick when it's constantly replaying. So such a good point to make that it's like you have, you don't need to fit a pair of, you know, cotton jeans or whatever, like it's not worth it. So thank you. In need of a reminder of the good in the world, in search of some inspiration as to how one person can make a difference, then I invite you to tune in to Be the Good with Kate, the podcast that reminds us how each of us has the power to make a difference. I'm Kate Cherichello, and I'm on a mission to share all the inspiring stories and good news moments I can. Join me each week as I chat with someone being the good through following their passions and helping others along the way, who will give tangible advice and examples of how you too can make a difference. Be the Good with Kate may be found on all podcast platforms and YouTube for sharing that. And And another note on what you just said, mindfulness also applies to these repetitive thought patterns that we Mm -hmm. find ourselves repeating to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, in, in yoga and in neuroscience, there's this concept Mm -hmm. of neural pathways in yoga. They're called chitta vrittis, like the thoughts that Mm -hmm. you have over and over again. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yoga in neuroscience, it's neural pathways. Mm -hmm. And what both ancient yogic scholars and practitioners and modern neuroscientists have both agreed on and both discovered is that you can change those. That's why I'm such a big believer that you can change our mind. So the mindfulness really helps us bring awareness to the repetitive thought patterns that do not help us because you know, people are split on this, that, well, if I stop criticizing myself, then I'm just going to get lazy and I'm going to stop improving myself but it's like when was the last time that you called yourself curse curse bleep bleep (laughs) actually what actually help you when's Mm -hmm. the last time that you spoke to yourself in a denigrating way actually helpful Mm -hmm. for you versus when you can look at yourself and even if you do make a mistake even if you do do something dumb we all do that if you can look at that and say Woo, I kind of messed up. Not I am a mess up, but I kind of messed up. Let me learn from this because I know I can do better. I know I'm better than this, right? There's a there's such a subtle but distinct difference when our thoughts are tearing us down versus when they are just like purely honest and building us up 
and we can we can believe great things about ourselves without it turning us into narcissists, mm-hmm. which I think is another people another fear that a lot of people carry, mm-hmm. especially those who have had contact and maybe trauma from narcissists. Is that well, if I don't criticize myself, then it's just going to mean I'm super arrogant and narcissist, and I just think I'm better than everyone. So I've got to keep myself down. But that's that's not how it works. It's not, it's not, no, yeah. <laughs> no. So mindfulness helps us bring awareness to those thought patterns and look at them from a less, like, again, non-judgmental. So not judging yourself for thinking, oh, I'm so stupid and lazy, but rather asking ourselves, like, do, am I really stupid and lazy? And does it really help me to continue to tell myself that I'm stupid and lazy. Like, is that honestly helping me? Just from a neutral perspective, like whatever happened, happened. But like, am I really helping myself right now? Versus, oh, I called myself stupid and lazy. I'm a fuck up. I can't do this right. Mm -hmm. So this the without judgment part of the mindfulness is super essential. Yeah. Oh, totally. And so many things I want to touch on there because again, (laughs) it's so true. And like, I know I've experienced this. It's like when you are hard on yourself, you almost believe that if you let up on the gas pedal, that things are going to spiral out of your, out of control. And you feel like you'll have no control of your life, but it's actually research has showed the complete opposite is Mm -hmm. when you actually celebrate your successes and recognize how far you've come, you actually get more dopamine in your brain that then increases drive, increases motivation. So you have to celebrate yourself because neurologically that is actually increasing your drive versus when you come down on yourself, you are only going to focus on what did not go well. And Mm -hmm. then you're not going to move yourself in a a direction that serves you. So it's also going to suck. Like it's going to not feel good ever. It's just going to suck. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're just going to meet resistance and everything you do when you're, you're at a lower energy. Like life is just harder when you're constantly berating yourself. Yeah. And, and it, it's again, the way our brains work is that when we ha- set an intention to see what's good in us, we actually filter out everything that doesn't apply to that. Mm-hmm. So if we set the intention, like I'm going to recognize everything that I do well it's part of that reticular activating center. It moves us in that direction and then filters out the noise. But if we're always talking about everything we do wrong, we're berating ourselves. Like that's what the brain is going to focus on and then filter out the good in your life. So it, it is, it is a subtle thing, but it makes all the difference. So it's the yes. neural pathway that you choose to water versus the ones you prune. Let's prune down the ones that are just self-defeating and self-critical because they're not supporting us in our highest expression of who we can be on this planet and our communities and our relationships and our work. And instead let's water the ones that are supportive of our greater goals and of our best version of ourselves. And this is a part that gets a lot of people stuck in the beginning when it feels inauthentic right? It feels inauthentic to look in the mirror and you have this really negative relationship with your body to look in the mirror and say, I'm so beautiful, or I look great, or I look healthy, or like, whatever. It feels so authentic when to say something positive to yourself, when you're so habituated to say things negative to yourself, that doesn't mean it's just because it feels inauthentic, just because it feels unnatural does not mean it's not right or it's not worth doing. It's going to feel awkward Mm -hmm. for a while until you have repeated the beliefs and the thoughts that you want to cultivate much more. You have gotten to that tipping point where you've repeated the beliefs that you want to cultivate much more than the ones that you want to Please. Mm-hmm. 100%. It, it's almost like if you're right hand dominant and then you go to use your left hand to, <laughs> to eat or brush your hair, it's going to feel so weird and awkward. Yeah. But the more you do it, the more those pathways gain strength and they get wired to make it more efficient. And now it feels more natural. So it is, it's going to feel super uncomfortable because it's totally out of your, your wheelhouse. It's something you've never done before. But mm-hmm. I completely agree. It doesn't make it any less important. You have to start somewhere. And, and kind of work through that discomfort to get to the place where you feel like, okay, this actually is resonating with me now. Absolutely. So important. Going off of that, I would love to hear a story of transformation of someone you've worked with who maybe came in for a photo shoot and maybe was not feeling confident in their body or was very negative, you know, 
uh, had a lot of negativity towards themselves. And then they went through the process that you have them go through and then came out on the other end, feeling much more confident. Do you mind just sharing a story? Yeah. And I won't use names just to protect the sure. you know, privacy of my clients, mm-hmm. but I have, there are certain things that a lot of people end up saying to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so one client who came in, I have a lot of clients who are all over the spectrum. I represent a lot of different body types on my website. So I often have clients in bigger bodies who find me because I'm like the only, not the only, actually there are other great photographers in my area who do showcase diversity, which is wonderful. And I love it. Um, But oftentimes I do have clients come to me in bigger bodies saying, well, I saw people who look like me on your website. Mm -hmm. So I want to come in. So I had one client who felt that way. um, And I had actually met her before. And then she finally felt like she was ready to do something like a boudoir photo shoot. And she was also dealing with some health issues and, you know, any of your listeners who deal with health issues will automatically know that when your body feels like it's failing you or uh, struggling and you just want it to feel good and it just won't, no matter what you do, that is really, really challenging and really, really real. And (laughs) no amount of uh, positive thinking is going to change the fact that you're ill. Uh, (laughs) It might help your immunity, actually. (laughs) It might help your body heal, but it's you know, just saying, I love my body is not going to automatically cure it. Mm -hmm. So this client had some mysterious, you know, many client, many, many people have just this pain that they can't explain. They don't know where it comes from. Doctors aren't super helpful. They don't know where it comes from either. You have to do all these tests. It feels very invasive. Mm -hmm. And this client was dealing with a physical condition that was not explained. And it made her feel like shit for sometimes days at a time. And it made it hard for her to participate in her work, to participate in life. Uh, And it made it hard for her to feel confident, to feel sexy in her body because she had such a, uh, her body wasn't cooperating with her very well at the moment, or at least, you know, she didn't know what was going on. So She came in for her session and at the end, um, some of the things that she said without reading this whole thing, just Mm -hmm. to kind of paraphrase it, some of the things that she said was like, I look like me in all the photos with the best version of me. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people are also really worried. A lot of people get really worried coming into a boudoir photo shoot that what if this, what if I don't look like me? You know, what if the hair and makeup or the the photographer edits me and makes me look different. Like they change the shape of my body or something like that. That's definitely a very real concern. A lot of people have coming in. Um, so she said, I look like me in all the pictures, but the best version of me. Um, <clears throat> and then do, 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 do all this stuff that isn't quite relevant, talking about the experience and whatever, but just having a good time and having great photos to remember the day and remind me that I am confident, beautiful, and sexy. These things that she wanted so hard to feel, but struggled to feel them in her body coming into the experience because of what was currently going on with her. And just that reminder that no matter what's going on with her on any given day, whether it's a good day or a bad day, she is a confident person. She is a beautiful person. She is a sexy person and her body that's true for both her body and her heart Mm -hmm. you know so that's kind of like totally paraphrased um but that is a very common uh situation like very common type of transformation I don't see my role as changing people Mm -hmm. they are I see my role as helping people express who they are so that they can remember because it's really easy to forget sometimes how incredible we are when we are surrounded by a society who likes us to tell who likes to tell us we're not mm-hmm. who, because of what we look like because of how we feel because of whatever illness or disability we're dealing with mm-hmm. and so i see i really see my role as helping individuals connect deeply to their bodies using the breath and the mindfulness 
physical sensations and stuff like that as a bridge between their body and their heart and giving them a space to just genuinely express who they are and be who they are and using a camera to capture that so that I can give them a book afterwards that says, hey, here's a reminder. Whenever you're feeling down, whenever you're feeling insecure, whenever you're feeling um, ugly or whatever it comes up, whenever you're feeling like you're not the absolute best person that you are, look at this reminder of who you are because you're incredible. You are magic. You are gorgeous. Your personality, your body, all of it is worthy of love and celebration. So just keep your photo. This is why I specialize in physical mm -hmm. products that I will, I'll never do digital only for boudoir mm -hmm. because the products are so important. Mm -hmm. Having this book, having this artwork that shows your body and is your reminder of your maximum greatness. Not even, honestly, not even maximum. Like you can go, you can go more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, there's no way I'm going to cap on. You more. <laughs> no way. Yeah. But that show you when you felt the most relaxed, when you felt the most respected, when you felt the most mindful and connected to your body, to show you who you were at that point and remind you that you can always get back to that point. I love that. It, it's, it's almost like your cue for internal acceptance. Like yeah. you see that and you're like, okay, I am enough. I don't need somebody outside myself or something to tell me that I am like, I'm always enough. And no matter what's going on, especially the example you gave, because there are so many people that do struggle every single day. And especially many of the people that listen to this podcast are, are genuinely struggling and, and have for maybe years or decades. And to give that example, is just so powerful here. You have a woman who understands that is going through really, really tough things and can still find that inner love for herself. And I just, I love that. What, what a gift. You have space for it. Mm -hmm. And even it's, it's such a good reminder, even on the days that you are feeling like crap again, mm -hmm. to be like, this is not the whole of who I am. Mm -hmm. I am not this illness. I am not mm -hmm. feeling this way. I am so much more. I might be ill and I might feel this way right now but that does not define the whole of who I am. So true. Oh my gosh. Yes. Because once we start saying we are something, then that is, that's a game changer. It can be a game changer for in a, in a good direction or it can be a game changer in a really negative direction. So understanding that differentiator in that you are so much more, you just happen to have an illness. You're not mm -hmm. your illness and such, such a, it's a nuance and, but it's such a critical nuance to understand because you can't be defined by the things that have happened to you. You are more than that. You are resilient, you're beautiful, and you're able to create the life that you want, regardless of what's happening outside of yourself. So I just love that. Amazing. And I hope that I know this will resonate with so many people to start seeing themselves, hopefully in a different light and recognize that no matter what messages you've received that you're not enough, you truly are. And it is about connecting with yourself and figuring out how you can authentically feel that inside. I love it. And I feel like we could talk all day. <laughs> um, for anyone though, who wanted to connect with you, maybe have a photo shoot, uh, you know, I know you're in the, in Colorado, but for anyone who wanted to at least reach out to you, um, how can they connect with you? Yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> My Instagram is at embodied art boudoir. Um, jokes on me for putting this weird French word in my company name. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be in the show notes, I'm assuming. It will. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just put it on the show notes because yeah. <laughs> sorry for making such a difficult to spell <laughs> handle. That's my bad. <laughs> That's so funny. But you know what? It might people might remember it because they're like, oh, it was that word. <laughs> yeah, embodied art boudoir. And it's so funny, even the name of my company came to me when after. <laughs> after journaling on my purpose and then meditating for 20 minutes it popped into my head I'm yeah. making embodied art yeah that's what we're doing get embodied make art that's your mm -hmm. reminder of your, your your magic your glory yeah. um so you can find me on instagram my website is also embodiedartboudoir.com if you want my instagram the link in bio you can find my card deck you can also find it the body deck um by typing solea.co into your browser. So soul, like your soul, S-O-U-L-E-A, solea.co. Mm -hmm. And that'll take you to our Etsy shop, which has the card deck, which I find to be um, just a much, uh, um, 
a, a daily mindfulness practice for setting that positive intention with your body. So I really like the card deck, especially for people who are in a more difficult position, a more habitually negative uh, thought pattern around their bodies. Somebody might give you the advice, create some affirmations, but if you're not used to thinking positively about your body, you're like, you would have no idea where to even start. So there's 77 different affirmations that no matter where you're at in your journey can help inspire you to think of your relationship with your body in new, positive, productive, compassionate, and respectful ways. So it's really great if you don't have that foundation of positive self thinking and positive self beliefs. Um, it's really great for helping build that foundation as well. Yeah. Such a good point because when we do have a negative brain, it's like so far to think of anything that's not yeah. that. So to have this guidance is, is huge. And, and again, it's that small little thing, just taking us whatever step you can forward is, is so important. So a tiny baby step, like one tiny baby step, reading an affirmation card that you're like, that's not true. Oh yeah. My body's amazing. That's not true. Even if you just read it every day, that you're basically training your brain to think in these ways. Mm -hmm. Even if, it, like I said, even if it doesn't feel like a belief yet, you're training your brain to think in these positive ways. And the more you do it, it's a cumulative action. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a cumulative results as well. It may take a while. I'm, I'm never going to be somebody out here promising a quick fix, instant results, like uh, instant transformation, mm -hmm. sucked great, like any of that. I, I won't, I hate, I hate that shit. I'm not going to fool anyone trying to tell you it's going to be an instant result. But what I can tell you is that if you do put in tiny little efforts mm -hmm. every day, every week, put in tiny little positive efforts that support you, you will in five, 10 years, look back and thank yourself so much for doing that. Because uh, then you will notice the difference. I only noticed the difference after five to 10 years. Mm -hmm. That's when I started really noticing the difference of my practice in the way that my brain was functioning. The way my brain works now is so different. Mm -hmm. Before, and honestly, I have way more fun now. <laughs> it's way more fun, way more happy, way, way better. <laughs> so yeah. Just, do it for future you down the road, do it for people in your community and in your families. Um, it's worth it. Oh my gosh. I couldn't agree more. I, I am such a huge advocate for the compound effect. Like mm -hmm. it, it, those small things add up and they, they genuinely do. And I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm not a quick fix person because it took a while for you to wire your brain this way. It's going to take a while, a while to get it to a different place, but it is worth every single second that you invest in yourself, every single second to, to move yourself in a, in a different direction and start now. That would be, that's the biggest thing. Start, start now. now. You're, you don't expect, you know, like I'll wait until this happens for me to start. No, no. start, start imperfectly. Yes. And, yeah. And you will, like you said, you will thank yourself. You may thank yourself in a month from now, like you will see yeah. a small change. So I, I love that. And I will, I will put everything in the show notes so that you can get the, the body deck and connect to Gabby and, and thank you so much for being here. I, I genuinely enjoyed this conversation with you. Thanks so much, Kelly. I'm so grateful for what you're doing for all your listeners Thank because you. that just, man, if we can improve our body image, the amount of changes it makes for the other parts of our lives is oh my gosh. pretty dramatic. hundred <laughs> percent. Absolutely. And it starts there. And then that's a catalyst for so many more changes. So I, I could not agree more. Absolutely. Thank you what you do. And thank you for inviting me on. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for spending your precious time to listen to this episode of Rewiring Health. My mission is to inspire hope and healing through science-backed practices. If you found value to this, please share with three people and leave a review. By doing so, this message can be spread to those who need to hear it most. Also, to get updates on the most recent episodes, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for being part of this community, and I am forever grateful for you.